This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. <laughs> Bingo! Four o'clock rock. <laughs> here we are on Hawaii, the state of clean energy. And today we're going to talk about the state of clean transportation. HDOT, that means Hawaii Department of Transportation, update. Okay, and our principal discussion is Hawaii's transportation sector marches toward clean energy with Maria Tome and Daryl Young from DOT. So um, we're going to have a little news first, though, from Hawaiian Electric Company. So Peter Rosek, spokesman. Oh, what's happening? Well, we announced today that uh, we are looking for uh, developers of renewable energy projects who are interested in coming to Hawaii. And uh, last December, we put out a request asking landowners who were interested, perhaps, uh, in talking to these kind of developers to, to let us know. And they gave us their names and some information. And uh, now we have a, a list of, of actually a very impressive list, longer than I expected, of, of landowners across our service territories who are willing to talk to developers developers about having some kind of renewable energy on their on their property and uh, now we're telling developers we have this list and so you know we're confronted with with a really gargantuan task 400 megawatts of clean energy added to our system clean generation added to our system in basically the next five years that's unprecedented we've never done that much of any kind of generation much less renewable and that each of those projects and there'll probably be dozens of them uh, you know takes a long time so what, all we're trying to do is kind of save a little time at the beginning so that if an international or a national or a local developer who says mm -hmm. I want to do a renewable energy project in Hawaii comes to town uh, they don't have to start from scratch in terms of where can I do this who might be willing mm -hmm. they don't have to knock on a lock on you know a lot of doors mm -hmm. uh, we'll at least be able to say talk to this one, two, three, four, uh, whatever number it is. And we, to, to have access to this list, the renewable energy developer has to show us his credentials. They're not just, you know, anybody, it's not the fly-by-night company. It's somebody that's done renewable energy projects, that has the expertise, that has some background. And if they do get to one of these landowners and they do reach an agreement, uh, then they can, you know, eventually they'll want to turn around and negotiate with Hawaiian Electric and say, we want to do this project. And one of our requirements before we'll sign a purchase power agreement is that the developer and, and you know, in, in, in cahoots with the landowner will go to the public, he'll go to their neighbors and say, mm -hmm. here's what we have planned, and they'll get public input. And then the process goes to a contract, to the, go to the Public Utilities Commission, consumer advocate. We're not cutting anything out of that part of the process. So we're just trying to move this very lengthy and very cumbersome project along a little bit. If we can save a developer, uh, you know, three months, six months looking for, uh, for land, looking to who to talk to, uh, that saves the developer money and ultimately we can negotiate a better contract and get a lower price mm -hmm. for our customers. So, you know, there's not a lot we can do uh, except to say we're looking for renewable energy developers, but this is one thing we think will uh, make it a little bit easier for, for uh, developers of any kind, any technology that fits into Hawaii's needs to come here and get started. Yeah. So what about on the front end, because I, I really think that's a great idea, uh, but what do the developers have to put up, you know, what, what so that we don't have just not fly by night, Landowners, but you know what? What? What are the landowners doing so that it does make it easier to make that connection? Not just I have land, you know, yeah. you can come. The, <laughs> the land we we can't really. Uh, we we opened it up to any landowners, and we'd still take names if they come in and say, you know, I've got X number of acres at this location. This is what it's looked like, and you know, we we have some questions, specific questions we'd want them to answer. Uh, we don't have any real other requirements of landowners. Uh, if they turn out to have a, a vacant lot in Makiki, you know, we're not going to put them mm -hmm. on the list. Mm -hmm. They're not going to, that's not going to work. But if they have a place where one of the technologies we need is, is viable, we can put them on the list. Uh, we are, you know, we're not, we're, we're not giving out their names or the names of any of these people to anybody but a reputable renewable energy developer. And anybody can come to town, but we don't want to give a head start or try to save this time for anybody. But some company that can say, look, we've done this number of projects in this number of places. Uh, they were successfully completed. Uh, you know, just to show we have a staff, we have the uh, resources, uh, you know, we have, we've, we've had, been able to get loans in the past. 
Each company may have a different sort of set of bona fides, uh, but we're, we just want to have some proof that it, it isn't somebody that incorporated their, you know, renewable energy and storm door company yesterday mm -hmm. in South Dakota. Mm -hmm. We want to have people, developers who are reputable. They have to work with the landowners and vice versa, and they have to do their due diligence. We're not involved in any of that. We're simply, we're, we're kind of doing match.com. Mm -hmm. And, yeah, uh, no, you know, we, we, yeah. we, we're not even going to set up the first date. We're just giving these guys phone numbers mm -hmm. and say, mm -hmm. here's who you call. Here are, the, here are landowners who have said they have this kind of land at this kind, and they're willing to talk to you. And after that, the landowner and the developer have to negotiate, and they, the, the developer has to figure out what's possible and come eventually come to us and say, uh, we've got this land, we've got this financing, we've got this, let's negotiate. And then we will, before too long, uh, put out what's called an RFP, a request for proposals, because the, the process for procuring, for actually getting contracts, is very strictly laid down by the PUC. So we're not circumventing any of that. Uh, we're simply saying, let us give you a little bit, you know, a list of, of speed dates sure. to look at. And then you still have to go through all the stuff. You still have to get your blood test and get your marriage license and all that stuff. But if we can save uh, a developer three, six months at the front end, uh, you know, we've got to do all this in five years, and as I said, nobody's ever in this state has ever done any kind of, uh, you know, 400 megawatts of any kind of generation in that short a time frame. We all know how long projects take and the obstacles they face, and uh, that's good. I mean, you know, we're not saying it's, that's not a, a process because we don't want just anything. We don't want just anybody. But uh, on the other hand, if we're going to get to clean energy by the milestones we have, we have to get moving. And behind all that, I would say, the, uh, there are federal tax credits right now that exist for renewable energy projects. And they are either going to disappear or, or be staged down over the next three to five years. And any time a, a developer can get a tax credit, we can say, give us a lower price. And we, the lower price we get is the lower price that our customers have to pay because we don't take a profit, we don't mark up any kind of energy that we buy from companies like that. So uh, we have a reason to move quickly, both for the reason of wanting to get to 100% and for the reason of wanting to get to the best deals we can. I guess uh, one of the things, yeah. because way, way back when, uh, for a while, um, there were cultural maps, you know, that they were um, that I think the UH did for us, the policy form. Mm -hmm. And so, if you could kind of call out those types of landowners, I mean, you small, you you decrease the pool, mm -hmm. but it's a more effective pool because they don't have to go, you know, with protesting, right. you know, why are you building on my land when it's not available. Sure, so, you know, that kind of thing. There, you know, anybody that comes to town is going to very quickly learn that it's, you know, just getting the phone number is not enough. You have to know, you know, know you have to look at the community, you have to look at the owners, you have to look at cultural concerns, mm. all those things. We're not trying to, to circumvent that. We just have a list of landowners, uh, big and small, across the territory, the five islands we serve, who said, we have some land, we believe it would be, uh, could be available for renewable energy. Uh, let people come and talk to us. Mm -hmm. And that's all we have, and that's all we can offer. We, all, we also have some information about, you know, what the circuits are like, so that, uh, you know, if you're going to put a, a, a renewable energy project way out in the country uh, and you don't have a wire to bring that electricity to the grid, that increases the expense. So somewhat, and as you know, the, the circuits are not infinitely able to take more power. They have to be upgraded or work might have to be done or whatever. And we're going to also be able to supply some of that kind of information to say, okay, there may be land out at, uh, you know, this place, but it's also going to entail upgrades to the 46 kV circuit or, or whatever. So those are things and, and the cultural part and the, you know, just the whole Hawaii tradition of the way things are done here are all going to be part of what a developer has to face. It's a great from idea. From here or whether they're from when, when is, is this stuff? your idea, Peter? <laughs> yeah, uh, I, thought of, I thought of it just before I came over here. No, when no. does this start? When does well, this all start? It starts right now. Oh. We asked in December for landowners to come forward. They did. We've compiled the list, and today we put out a news release saying, and we're going to, you know, we're going to put it out in other ways to reach developers across the country, mm -hmm. around the world.
world. As you know, a lot of the, the renewable energy development here is funded by companies in Japan or mainland companies or Canadian companies. Uh, we don't have, we have some local developers who've developed renewable projects, but uh, why is capital poor, as we all know, and, mm -hmm. and uh, it's going to take outside investors coming here and saying, I'm willing to uh, take a chance on doing mm -hmm. business in Hawaii, and I'm willing to, because, uh, you know, because I love the place or because it's such a, a, you know, it does have great opportunity for us to do whatever kind of project models. we do. And so many good things about this. Mm -hmm. One is it, it shows that Hawaiian Electric is innovative and creative. This is an innovative and creative idea. Number two is it, 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 it will bring people together where they might not otherwise come together. Uh, number three is um, it, will, it will bring foreign capital in, which is necessary. Um, it, will also, it will also allow a kind of a, um, a mag it's, a, it's a sticky field, you know what I mean? Uh, it's like uh, Hawaiian Electric is saying, these guys are, we can't vouch for them, but this, they're, good, they're good enough for us to put on the list. So, you, you know, it's a credibility point and, um, and it's also going to, just in the same vein, it's also going to uh, make the point to anybody involved that if they screw up and get involved in a mess, they may not be on the list anymore because you can't afford to have messes. Right. Um, and the whole, and oh, and finally, and you mentioned this, is, um, is that it will expedite the whole process. Right. Mm -hmm. And this leads me to my next question, which we only have a minute left here. <laughs> right. uh, and that is, what is the relationship <laughs> of, of this, you know, expedition measure to PSIP and to oh, the good. approval That's of PSIP? So okay. Uh, I got to stop good you right safely. there. Acceptance of PSIP. The Public Utilities Commission said, okay, uh, third try a charm. Uh, <laughs> you, we're going to accept this. We, you know, we, we didn't like your IRP. We didn't like your first PSIP. Finally, okay, we're going to accept this. <laughs> And they made a lot of criticism, Yay. as you know, and they had a lot, of, but we're very glad we have now a starting point, a PSIP that is accepted with a lot of stipulations and a lot of warnings about, uh, you know, we're going to scrutinize every project at every cost and everything very closely as they should. And the, the relationship is that we are committed in that power supply improvement plan to this 400 megawatts of mm. uh, renewable energy in, base, in five years to reach the milestones which the state government, which the legislature and the governor have set for us. And we have put a number of things in the PSIP, including doubling the amount of rooftop solar uh, by 2030. In other words, from about 80,000 homes uh, and businesses ambitious. to about 165,000 mm. homes, very ambitious. And now they say, okay, that seems like uh, you know, we hope that's doable, and now you you got to go make that happen. So we. So this is part of making it happen. This is yeah. absolutely so you're part. implementing the PSIP right now this today. This is making it happen right now. This is mm -hmm. getting the ball rolling, and you know, the inertia. The hardest part is giving it the first push, and that's what we're trying to do for these mm -hmm. grid scale, mm -hmm. you know, renewable energy projects. We're doing a lot, uh, you know, much of it behind the scenes and fairly wonky about trying to get the grid ready for more renewables. We have a lot mm -hmm. of, we have a program with Enro right now uh, about advanced inverters. We're testing a kind of a, a little, what's called a collar that fits on your, uh, your, your meter and can help us allow you to get more uh, to put solar on your roof. We have a program that if you're willing to put solar in a battery, you can breathe through, you know, it's more expensive. Sounds but like we're really through. moving along. Well, we're trying our best. I mean, I, I don't want to... And you extended uh, the, uh, the uh, credit, or the rebate, rather, on the electric, electric cars, on the Nissan Leaf. Yeah. Uh, that's very good. Well, the, uh, we've, we've working with, uh, with Nissan, all credit really is to them. They said, we'll work with you. We'll give any of your customers on any of your three companies and Kauai Island Utility Co-op a $10,000 discount. Uh, and, you know, I, can't, I wish I could say, or I'm mm -hmm. glad I can't say, we're not spending ratepayers' money. We're not spending anybody's money. It's but Nissan. you're organizing It's it. Nissan's mm -hmm. money, but we're the ones that can reach. I mean, everybody in the state yeah. who's a customer gets a bill. And that's we the can same tell, thing we can as, tell as making the land matrix. Yeah, it's the same true. thing. Well, so you're, you're encouraging it. It's management. Yeah. That's what it is. It's encouraging people to do the right thing. And we are involved with a Drive Electric Hawaii organization, which includes Blue Planet, Ulapono, and the state for the same purpose. Promote electric vehicles. Find a way to make it easier for people to get an electric vehicle, to get the benefits, to understand that. We're doing all of those things. And, and is it enough? We would, you know, 
it's well, never enough. Will you come around again. and tell us what else you do? Because we'd I, like to I'll see yeah, you on a regular come. basis. Because <laughs> things are moving along here. Yeah. I will be glad to come back. And, and every Nixon time we have something to brag about, yes. we'll <laughs> All right. Thank you, Peter. I'll be here to brag. Okay. Peter Russell, Hawaii you, Electric thanks, Company. Thank you. Okay. Thank you so Aloha. much. Absolutely. We'll take a short break. Aloha. We'll be right back with our, our uh, visitors in chief. <laughs> You're watching Think Tech Hawaii, which streams live on thinktechhawaii.com uploads to YouTube, and broadcasts on cable OC16 and Alelo 54. Great content for Hawaii from Think Tank. Living in this crazy world, so caught up in the confusion, nothing is making sense for me and you. Maybe we can find a way, there's got to be solution, how to make a brighter day. Aloha, I'm Kaui Lucas, host of Hawaii is My Mainland, here on Think Tech Hawaii Fridays at 3 p.m. Hawaiian Standard Time. We explore environmental issues, political issues, keeping it local any way we can. Aloha. Freedom. Is it a feeling? Is it a place? Is it an idea? At Dive Heart, we believe freedom is all of these and more, regardless of your ability. Dive Heart wants to help you escape the bonds of this world and defy gravity. Since 2001, Dive Heart has helped children, adults, and veterans of all abilities go where they have never gone before. Dive Heart has helped them transition to their new normal. Search DiveHeart.org and share our mission with others, and in the process, help people of all abilities imagine the possibility. Okay, we're back. We're live here on Hawaii, the state of clean energy, organized by the Hawaii Energy Policy Forum. We're talking about the state of clean transportation and the State Department of Transportation update. We're calling it Hawaii's transportation sector marches forward to clean energy. Whoa, yeah. Okay, we, <laughs> <laughs> we, have, we have two guests, Maria Tome. Oh, my co-host, Sharon Moriwaki of the Hawaii Energy Policy Forum, and Maria Tome, Chief Engineer of the State of Hawaii Public Utilities Commission, I love women engineers. Yeah. Although I'm here, I, I'm here in the capacity as the chair of the Transportation Committee for Hawaii Energy Policy Thank you. Forum. Thank you. Thank you. So, okay. so we are changing gears. It's all right. You can do that. <laughs> be flexible. To transportation. I can be flexible. Yes, yes. Okay. And Daryl Young, Deputy Director of the Harbors Division at the State of uh, Hawaii, the, yeah. the State Hawaii State Department of Transportation, yeah. and we're talking about clean energy in transportation today. Yeah. So first, we're going to describe the series, Maria. The series lasts through August. What's the series okay, about? Well, we're marching forward okay, all right, good. <laughs> with the topic of transportation. And the Hawaii Clean Energy Day on August 28th mm -hmm. you know, is close to the end of the month. And so we're going to be covering transportation topics all the way through. And so we're really glad that Department of Transportation is represented right. here. And thank so, you. Thank you. Uh, yeah. So, so um, following, so thank you, Dara, for coming and oh, kind of welcome. representing <laughs> the Harbors Division, but also yeah. state transportation. We wanted to start the series with right. the case in chief, the, right, right. the HDO team. Right. Uh, we are going to have um, Shim Lawler with the Coalition of uh, Transportation for um, Clean Transportation or Sustainable Transportation. Um, next week, we're going to have Kauai talking about their program. Uh, Lee Steinmetz, and we may possibly even have the mayor on because he's very, com com you know, very committed to having a, a transportation system that is second to none, yeah. and uh, and then we'll follow that with. Um, um, let's see, I, I can't really see. I think we're going to try to get a couple more people on, but we're hoping to have the whole whole uh, month on on transportation, clean transportation. So, Daryl Young, what's yep. happening? Oh, well, you know, it's great that you had Peter on earlier, uh, you know, and he's talking about uh, 
having this uh, land bank that's available for developers to look at. Mm -hmm. uh, kind of along the same lines that we discussed uh, in the past few shows that, that I've been on, that you know we're looking at if someone is bringing in alternate energy and it happens to be a fuel type of product, we need to be talking about same like here, having starting the conversation as to how are we distributing this fuel? Where is it going? How is it reaching the neighbor islands? What kind of shipping device is it going to be in? Is it going to go through pipelines? If it is going to go into pipelines, it's something that we need to be talking about now. Uh, as, as we've shared in the past, we're going to be building a dedicated fuel pier out of Kalailoa. Uh, my biggest fear is we're going to finish building the pier and there's no alternate fuel lines in it, right? So, you know, so... So it's it's That's how okay. do we begin it's that? All right, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But again, it's, very it's, proactive. it's it's a very it's a very um, noble cause that we're working at, trying to get to 100% uh, uh, renewable fuels for electri uh, electricity generation as well as for transportation fuels. It's that it's these little things that we need to f to figure out. Um, one of the things I shared with Maria when we were um, Maria when we were sitting on the side was we know how to ship cars. Uh, regular fossil fuel cars. They come in less than a quarter of a, a tank. You know, we get them on and off the, the boats, rolling on, rolling off. We just started to realize, as we're starting to import more and more of these electric cars, like Peter talked about, I don't have any charging station near the, 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 um, the harbor. So that's, a, again, that's a logistical thing that we have to figure out. You know, how many of these rapid chargers do I need so that we can make sure that they can get to the dealerships? You know, with enough of a charge, right? It's 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 these little things. The you know, electric you could cars take a in. page yeah. out of Peter Rossig's book. Yeah, yeah. You could say, you guys down in, in the harbors area, right. if you would like to, um, you know, dedicate your yeah. land and make a yeah. deal with some charging station yeah. entrepreneur, yeah. 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 Uh, we can put you together with well, some charging station entrepreneurs. Yeah, funny. I didn't know Peter was here. We we're actually talking to Brennan uh -huh. Morioka, who yeah. did the transition. Oh, nice uh, yeah, yeah. And and he's he's in charge of electrification of transportation mm -hmm. uh, issues. And this is one of the topics that came up this morning uh, when we were talking. Yeah. So, yeah. Interesting. Yeah. So it, I agree with you. Transportation. So, yeah. The big the big thing in transport, at least yeah. vehicular transportation, right. charging stations. Yeah. Right. 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 We're going to get Brennan on, right. so we're going to ask him yeah. that question. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 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 you got a list, right? right. <laughs> so yeah. yeah. Again, for for our for for my team, it's more the logistics. Yeah. How does everything mm -hmm. move back and forth? Yeah. And more yeah. efficient. Yeah. 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 You, you may not be able to, you know, control the individual decision of the right. individual driver, right. but if right. you, you know, if you manage these yeah. assets, manage yeah. the players, yeah. uh, then you will create yeah. a sort of collective yeah. incentive, right? And maybe disincentive right. too. Right. And, and again, as we've seen from this morning as well, with uh, Servco coming in and, and talking about a hydrogen fuel cell car and a fuel uh, a fueling station that they're hoping to build. How are we going to move that fuel? What are the, the, the parameters that, that Ed has to deal with as it moves on the highways, mm. right? So yeah. again, it, it's something that we're embracing. We're just trying to figure out how the, all the pieces come together. Do you, do you see uh, logistical changes to the highways themselves? Uh, again, I, not knowing how that fuel would be handled and whether or not what type of uh, vessel or container it's going to be in, that's going to really dictate. So the first question yeah. is the fuel. Yeah. How, how, how are you distributing? Are we, producing hydrogen or are we shipping hydrogen yeah mm. yeah because they come in containers too right. so to take right. it to the neighbor islands right. there's got to right. be some right. procedure too so right. maria w which is going to win is it going to be hydrogen or pure electric <laughs> well actually you're going to need a combination yeah, yeah. yeah. why why yeah. do i need yeah. a combination well you've got your um small vehicles with that have your electric batteries and they they go it's talking like an engine yeah yeah, yeah. And, you know but your, you know hydrogen has a um, shorter refueling time um, for the larger vehicles at a certain point you know so your fuel cells or your batteries are both going to be developing mm. and so there is uh, an interest and a support for both you know and if you're talking about transporting energy from where it's produced to where it's needed and you're looking at well do we build more infrastructure that involves the power lines or the batteries or do you have some kind of a fuel that can be transported you know there are going to be times when you need one or you prefer Depending the other on what you're yeah. using the vehicle so at the most so today we can't say it's going to be all one and i right. don't think even in the future it will be only one you know both right. of them need to be so which one should i get 
Well, what, what, what do you want? <laughs> and I want why? To, I want to you take know, advantage we're doing of Peter, no. Peter's $10,000 yeah. <laughs> rebate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go yeah. for it. <laughs> so yeah. here I am driving on the highway, right. okay, uh, with my electric car, and right. uh, lo and behold, it runs out of, right. you know, battery charge. <clears throat> now, if it was a gas car, somebody could come with a little red tank and right. pour me a gallon or two, and yeah. then I could go forward. Right. How do you get my, my electric car off the highway so I'm not so, jamming up traffic? So my understanding, again, this is just my brief understanding in the short conversation we had this morning, is they actually have mobile units of rapid charge units, but they're the size of like a large ballroom vacuum cleaner, you know, that, you know, see the stand up oh, yeah. ones that are almost like a Zamboni. Is that the Moby? Yeah, <laughs> yeah I think Moby, so. Moby yeah, makes yeah, yeah, yeah. But again, it's, it's how does someone get that? that yeah. heavy equipment to you, right? Is it in the back uh, of a truck? Yeah, Is yeah, it part of the uh, figure eight patrol? Yeah. We don't know. And, and, and I think that, that the private sector will outpace what it is that we're thinking about. Uh, you know, anecdotally, I remember the story that we had where, you know, someone is saying, I'm shipping a Tesla. Where's my charging station in Molokai? I don't know. <laughs> Not. Right. Not. <laughs> right. But I've already bought the car and it's on its way. Uh oh. Send it back. Did anybody right. check? <laughs> right. But, you know, again, so, so the private sector is, 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 yeah. is outpacing yeah. the, the, the infrastructure. Yeah. And, and that, and that is, is all I'm trying to say is that we need to have that discussion on yeah. how the infrastructure yeah. catches yeah. up. You know, I, while I was traveling, you yeah. heard me, I just yeah. came back from a trip. I was thinking about this very thought, mm. not necessarily anticipation right. of right. this discussion, but I was thinking that a young entrepreneur, yeah. well, an entrepreneur yeah. of any age, right. okay? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. fair about yeah. that. No yeah. discrimination, yeah. Yeah. okay? Could, could say, I will, give me a place. It right. doesn't have to be, you know, 10 square feet, whatever mm -hmm. it is. Mm -hmm. Give me a place and I will install a charging station okay. um, and I will pay rent to the owner mm -hmm. and I will pay, uh, you know, for the, for the charge. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about electric, of course. I will pay, in fact, I would do both. I would do hydrogen and I would do okay. electric, both in the same station. Right. So Maria will say, good for you, Jay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, and, I, and I will pay rent and I will charge for the charge or the mm -hmm. hydrogen. Right. And I can do this cheap in various places right. around the city. And all you have to do is somehow, I don't know the level of incentive, mm -hmm. somehow incentivize me to get into this business. Right. And then I would build 10 of them, you know, maybe. Right. Maybe I'd have an income out of that. Right. Right. Uh, right. And then you incentivize a lot of people and, you know, would the state ever consider doing that? Would you have to do the RFP process on that? Probably, you know, yeah, yeah. if it's a use of state lands, use of state funds, and you run into the uh, environmental assessment or environmental impact statement. So, you know, there is a cost of working with government, and we're trying to figure out how we um, allow that entrepreneur to recoup that yeah. right, over time. Yeah, yeah. So how but would I mean, you do that? Because you've got the harbors, and it's right yeah. there when you know yeah. you, the ship comes in. It's like right there. So yeah. you know, what, what can you do to get that land when they're, especially yeah. in those places that are yeah. not being used? Yeah. 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 Well, so you know, it it, for for us when we're talking about charging stations, these are charging stations behind our security line. So, you know, that's mm -hmm. what we're looking at right now. It's it's how do I now I get it into uh, public domain. Right. So you're talking about someone's driving around and they need to find some place to. Oh, to well, it'd be on my right. GPS right, right, right. app. Tell right. me exactly you're where it's right, <laughs> right, right. Mine would be behind a security fence where you would need the type of security cards that we have in order to get there. It's more for how do I how do I supply those 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 vehicles as they're coming out as to the dealership? Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. No, yeah. this is important. But, but they're both, but they're, they're both things to look at. Yeah, yeah. yeah. because if you can't get it off the yeah. yard, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's stuck in there. Yeah, right? yeah. 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 And then uh, my understanding also is that there's three different levels of the types of charges oh, that you can get. Fast and faster. Level one, yeah. Yeah. well, level yeah. one, yeah. level two, faster, faster. Yeah. 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 Level one, level two, and fast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so it's that it's that investment into the other aspect is for just for vehicles is at home. So I'm at home. And uh, the, one of the glorious things about electric cars, and right. maybe p hypothetically right. hydrogen cars, I'm, I'm seeing you as a, <laughs> an advocate yeah. for hydrogen cars, okay. um, is that you know I can do it at home. I mean, yeah. conceptually, I can right. do it. But the problem is, uh, and Sharon will tell you, you got to get an electrician, you got to pay him big bucks, yeah. and you got to get you know approvals and permits and right. this and that and the other thing, and you know it's a hassle. If I could simplify this. Right. If I could have a you know, regular process, bing, bang, bong, right. done, and maybe maybe even uh, kind of a corporate electrician, if that's right. possible, right. goes right. out there, 
It's done. Yeah. Yeah. He's not. A, he's not learning on the job. He yeah. knows how to do this. You know. Yeah. Uh, if I could do that, I could make it easier for uh -huh. people to supply their own home with a charging station, right. and that that's not going to solve the problem about the highway. You know, right. you know, losing right. your charge on the highway, but it it will solve the problem about somebody who doesn't have a long distance to travel right. and who would be okay by you know charging right. overnight. Yeah. Right. And this would be I'm only looking for incentives, yeah. right? Because yeah. yeah. if we incentivize the public about right. this, we'll have more electric right. and hydrogen cars on the road <laughs> all the time. <laughs> yeah, and, and some of the things that we're like, looking at is. Yeah. Is there a public-private partnership opportunity that we have out there? Let's say we were to build a parking structure of some sort, and um, rather than me storing cargo uh, on a horizontal plane, I'll start storing cargo in a vertical plane, right? Mm -hmm. So could one floor or several floors be open to the public, and then the other floors be secured and, and be just cargo? But should there be an area that can be expandable that can allow for the charging of, or the rapid charging of, mm -hmm. of vehicles within within that parking structure. Mm -hmm. right? Yeah, well, we have a we have a statute now yeah. that provides X percent of the uh, right. you know uh, parking stalls right. in a given public parking facility right. has to have you know has to be a right. charging stations. But you know, if you look into the right. future on this, look right. five years. You know, yeah. all of a sudden we have more than 5,000, yeah. we have 20,000 yeah. or 30,000 yeah. electric cars on the highway. Knock, right. uh, knock wood when yeah. I say this. Yeah. Um, okay, then we have to change the ratio, don't we? Right. We, right. So we have to go it's back a, to the legislature. But whatever you put in should be, ex so as you start thinking that way, your system shouldn't go in fixed. It should be going in to be expandable. Gradually. Right. In fact, it could even right. be a, an algorithm. Right. So we have 20,000 right. cars in the yeah. state, then we need yeah. this percentage, and yeah. 30,000, we need that percentage. Now, the owners of the parking yeah. lots also are able to put right. in charges to meet the needs right. of their customers. Sure. So you don't right. really have to go to the legislature sure. for, right. you know, parking lot owners They could to do say, it voluntarily. Hey, yeah, yeah, hey, you know, we I have certain customers. I hope you guys are listening. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Also, just for the record, yeah. um, the level one charger is 120. I mean, that's right. what everybody yeah. has. You right. Know. You can do that and at so home. Right. that takes longer, but it does transfer power into mm -hmm. the battery right. pack. And so, you know, that is one one of the things right. that can be done. Right. And so it takes longer to charge your yeah. car, your leaf, or but whatever. Home, you know, home, if you want okay. to, right. you know, it it gets it, it is contributing to your your yeah. battery. So, now, having fast chargers, of course, you know, if you need to have that. At a, at a site, you know, and if you can have right. more of those, right. that, I think that's really a, a, good, a good thing. And getting the folks together to discuss all of these different yeah. aspects and yeah. to see the synergies and to get excited about the right. business opportunities or the vehicles right. or the infrastructure right. and, and the future, you know, that's right. why we're bringing folks together right. to have these panels, like right. at the Clean Energy Day in August, August 28th. Yeah. Yeah. So we're going to have... August 28th? Yes, August 28th. She said August 28th. August 28th. August 28th. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> August 28th. That's the Clean Energy Day. Okay, where is that then? That was at the YWCA. <laughs> Very yeah, good. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Because yeah. there's so many details yeah. and there's so many good ideas yeah. that come when folks are sharing yeah. their concerns and their hopes. And, you know, even yeah. joking around, you yeah. can get a new, a new perspective on it. Yeah. Okay, Daryl, on uh, behalf of the Department of Transportation, yeah. what would you want people to focus on. This camera one, they're all okay. looking. What, 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 what's your message to them today <laughs> about this subject? Well, I mean, I, I think we all want to try to live Pono. We all want to try to live green. It, it's how do we get there and having that discussion like the Hawaii Clean Energy Day begins that discussion as a community for us to try to look at some of the pieces that we're looking at. Again, every conversation we're having with people is, is bringing new ideas and new um, opportunities to our mind. If I didn't have that conversation with Brennan this morning, we wouldn't be talking about quick charges down at the, the mm -hmm. harbors, right? What, what's good for my lands in my division is we're the bridge between Waikomilo and downtown. Mm -hmm. So we have two opportunities to create these uh, op, uh, charging areas. Uh, it's, it's finding that balance between the speed and how, f how fast you need to turn the parking stall. Yeah. Right. Could you just put yeah. one more little word in about okay. fuels because I, okay. I know that that's your area because yeah. it all comes in through the harbors. Well, yeah. and that, that's an important part. Yeah. So, the, so for us, our two busiest harbors is, is Honolulu Harbor, Kalailoa Harbor, and as Maria knows, our busiest harbor as it relates to fuel is Kalailoa. Mm -hmm. So that's the one we're going to be building a dedicated fuel pier. 
whoever is out there that's looking at it, that's interested in it, you know, they really do need to have that conversation with us or they will be left out as we build this fuel pier. You know, it's going it's to be built uh, to accommodate the users that we have. Um, and, and most of those users have infrastructure that's already there. Who should they contact? Uh, contact me. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> that's Daryl Young. Daryl Young. Daryl Department Young. of Transportation. Yep. Okay, Maria, now speaking in your capacity as a, the leader of the Hawaii Energy Policy Forum Transportation Working Group, yep. Okay, yep. what yep. message would you leave with our public? Well, there's a great opportunity to come and hear and talk about all the transportation issues, not just the fuels or even just the um, highways, but also the land use plans and what mm. the counties are doing and hear uh, from the Department of Health on the greenhouse gas aspect of things. You know, so we're bringing together a bunch of folks to look at this from all angles and we're not just presenting about what's happening, although that's very interesting right. because things change from right. you know one month to the next and a lot has been happening. But also, what is the vision for the future? What is the vision for 5, 10, 20, 50 years from now? Because what we build today is going to be in use. And if we go in one direction, then when we look back, we'll say, hey, you know, either we're really glad we knew that or we did that or we worked mm -hmm. together or, gee, we missed an opportunity. So this is the place to be. August 28th, Hawaii Clean, yep. Clean Energy Day. Come and share your ideas in person with other people who are also very interested. Yeah. In very important discussion. Yeah. Yeah. Coming together, rubbing <laughs> shoulders, rubbing yeah. ideas. Yeah. Okay, Sharon, you are the co-host. It is now your duty to close the show. Okay. Say something profound. Profound! <laughs> I think transportation and, and energy comes together. And, and really, Daryl knows, transportation is the heart of the economy. I and mean, if you can't move people and goods coming in from the harbors, going on our highways, uh, really, we're stuck. And, and we want to get unstuck and we want to look to the future and Clean Energy Day is where it starts and uh, the Department of Transportation also has a sustainable yes. transportation um, forum that will take what comes out of the Clean Energy Day and hopefully take it forward on all fronts. Right. So be there or be square. Okay, that's Sharon Mor <laughs> Moriwaki, co-chair of the Hawaii Energy <laughs> Policy Forum. Uh, Maria Tomei, the chair of the Working Group on Transportation in the Hawaii Energy Policy Forum, among other things. <laughs> okay, <laughs> Daryl Young, Deputy Director of the Department of State Department of Transportation. All you guys completely invested in transportation, I know this. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Aloha. 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 Aloha.